dignity. My name is Karen Blannard, and I am the executive director that is fortunate to work with the three school principals of Riverview Elementary, Baltimore Highlands, and Lansdowne. So how about just a round of applause for the leadership in those buildings? So we are really excited to have you here with us this evening, and we want you to know that it's important for you to understand the process and to really take a close look at the different scenarios regarding the boundary study. Our overall goal in this process is threefold. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we're maximizing space at the newly constructed Lansdowne Elementary School, which will be larger than the current school. We're also looking to address overcrowding in any of the three schools involved. And we are also looking to promote diversity with students among the three schools. So this evening, you'll have the opportunity to view the different options that are available. And you'll also have an opportunity to complete an online survey. And it's really important to receive your input on that online survey, which you're, you'll be hearing a little bit more about. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Melissa Appler, and she will get us started with the process. Good evening. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Melissa Appler. I am the coordinator of strategic planning with Baltimore County Public Schools. I want to um, thank everyone. Um, your input and your feedback in this process and your participation is extremely important, and the committee members uh, will really take into consideration all the feedback they hear tonight. So to just get started. So tonight, uh, the purpose of this uh, public information session is to learn how, what the process was. How did the committee um, develop and uh, these four options that you're considering tonight or you're reviewing and providing input on. Um, you're going to review the draft boundary options. There's two stations set up that you can review those and you'll be able to see all the statistics and utilization information on those schools. Uh, and you'll uh, have the opportunity to complete the online survey uh, to provide your input and feedback. And this is extremely important um, to go back. To the survey runs till November 2nd, so you can go back to your community um, and let them know about the survey so they can also provide their uh, feedback. So a boundary is a line that defines an attendance area. It's guided by policy and rule 1280. That Im and you can find that information more about those, uh, the principles and the guidelines of that in, on um, the BCPS website. It's driven by a community committee of principals, teachers, and parents. Uh, it's a, the objective is to examine the data creation of options, collaboration, and uh, deliberation engagement with the greater community to uh, their ultimate goal is to take a recommendation to the board of uh, select one boundary option to take to the board for consideration. Um, this, throughout this process, uh, we have uh, engaged with uh, Ms. Bell, Ms. Maleni Bell, who has helped us throughout the process uh, with um, effective, uh, providing effective collaboration. And she is um, going to tell you a little bit about how she's assisted with the process and her background. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm going to tell you just a little bit. So like Melissa said, my name is Maleni Bell, and um, I've been assisting the process by working as a community engagement specialist. My background, at least for the last five years, has been in restorative practices, and that is about building community and also repairing harm. So how I've been interacting with this process is assisting with the group dynamics and also just ensuring or looking for ways where we can be more equitable and allow for more access to voice in this process. Um, that's it, short and sweet. Um, it's been a pleasure to, to serve. So. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. So the committee, the committee is comprised of uh, two community representatives, the principal of the school and uh, one teacher from each of the three schools. So the committee is made up of 12 committee, 12 committee members. Um, they ask the committee to suspend their parochial interests. Uh, they meet four times from September to November. So, so far they have met three times. They'll have this public information session to get input and feedback from you. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to, again to complete the online survey so they can, they'll take all of that information and then meet again to either uh, review the options, uh, modify the options, and, and ultimately at the end of that meeting they will select an option to recommend to the board. Um, 
They collaborate exclusively with each other. All the meetings the public has been uh, can observe and has um, been able to come and observe and it's been live streamed um, and the videos are also available online for all the meetings that we've had so far. Uh, and then, um, as I said, the, uh, with the final recommendation, they present that to the board and the community superintendent will take that. So uh, this is the committee calendar. As I was just saying, we've had three meetings so far. Uh, the orange box where the public information session is is where we are today. Uh, we will have one more meeting on November 8th. We will get back together uh, this and not once the survey completes and they have tr um, time to review that information. Uh, then it will, a recommendation will go to the board on, um, I'm in trouble seeing the date, November 21st. And then the, uh, with, with that recommendation, the board will then have a hearing as well where you'll be able to go and provide feedback on that recommendation. And you'll have the opportunity to stand up and you can actually speak directly to the board members with any questions, concerns, input you have on the recommended option. So about the Southwest area, BCPS um, is in the midst of a $1.3 billion Schools for Our Future Capital Plan to add capacity and support the increasing enrollment in the area. They've actually had uh, five total elementary school projects uh, in this region to provide that capacity relief. Uh, Catonsville, um, which opened in fall of 2016, replacement and expansion school. Uh, West Town and we uh, was also a replacement and expansion which opened in fall of 2016. Westchester had an addition and that opened in fall of 2016. Um, Relay just opened this uh, past September. And now uh, Lansdowne is the final project to provide capacity relief um, to the schools in this area. And that will open in August or September of 2018, so next year. Um, the following factors are driving the need to look at the boundaries in this area. First, the reconstruction expansion of Lansdowne will add capacity. Uh, currently, the uh, capacity is 313 students, and the school will be um, increasing to 709 students. Uh, Lansdowne is currently at 156% um, utilization, so they are over capacity, and Baltimore Highlands is at 123%. So the participating schools, as Ms. Blannard said earlier, is Baltimore Highlands, Lansdowne, and Riverview. Some may um, uh, ask why Relay or Halethorpe, which are also neighboring schools, are not included. They were included in the first boundary change process with uh, the Catonsville, Westchester, Westtown, and students um, along the immediate boundary to Lansdowne were moved, and we try to avoid moving students more than once. We don't want to, um, they moved this year, so we don't want to move them again next year to another school. So the community, uh, the boundary study objectives are to reduce overcrowding in the region, create viable, successful boundaries to effectively um, utilize the added capacity at Lansdowne Elementary School, and to support diversity among the schools that reflects the community and the school system. When the committee is reviewing the options and developing the options, we ask them to consider um, policy in Rule 1280, which outlines a number of considerations that we like them to, um, that they are to consider when they are developing these options. Um, these include maintaining the continuity of neighborhoods, maintaining or increasing the diversity among students to reflect the diversity of the region, um, the impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns on students, Minimizing the number of times an individual student is reassigned, as I mentioned before. Efficient use of capacity in the affected school. Uh, Long-term enrollment and capacity. Where is their projected enrollment? Is it increasing, decreasing? Make sure we um, have uh, room for those uh, increases in the future. Location of feeder schools and boundaries and phasing in other grade levels. Additional considerations that we ask the committee to consider are to look at the geographic features such as railroads and creeks and major highways when they're looking at boundaries. And we ask them to um, also uh, look at the ability of the school to accommodate expansion of early childhood and special education needs um, and programs and other programs at the school. So, so far, the committee has met three times since September and has spent many hours in boundary meetings and outside of boundary meetings 
uh, reviewing the information, the statistics, and uh, the boundaries. The committee created and reviewed 10 uh, variations of options. So uh, at one of the meetings, they sat with maps and they created their own options. So all the options that you're seeing tonight were created directly uh, by the committee. The data and information that the committee examined as part of the uh, creation of the options is they looked at the school enrollment, the capacity of the schools, uh, the, uh, the future projected enrollment, zoning, they had zoning maps available, um, new development that is proposed in the area, uh, and they've also looked at school walking zones and student diversity and demographic data. The options are considered draft. This is very important that all these options that you're going to be reviewing tonight are still drafts. They're going to take the feedback that they hear from you tonight, and though they can make modifications to these, they can create entirely new options. Everything you're seeing tonight is still a draft. The committee's charged uh, to recommend, uh, so at the end of this, the committee's charged to recommend one option to take forward uh, to the community superintendent. Um, and then that the community superintendent will then take that to the um, superintendent for um, consideration by the board. Again, nothing is final until the board approves it. So at the public hearing, you have another opportunity to voice your opinion on the uh, recommended option that they move forward with. Okay, so when you there's two stations this evening set up that you'll be able to review the map and the statistics that uh, the committee has uh, decided to move forward with. And um, I just want to go over a little bit about understanding what you're looking at when you go over to review the maps. So the background colors on the maps, the green, the purple, the orange, they're the option boundary. And then you will see a dark uh, red outline. That is the current boundary. So the colors are the option, and the red is the existing boundary, so you can see where there are changes. You'll see a small uh, black and white dashed line. These are what we call planning blocks. They are small areas um, from which the co committee was um, able to review and build the options. So they were provided all their statistics by these smaller planning areas to help them um, get the statistics and information on those areas and build those. Um, you will also see the, on all the maps, you'll have the number of students that are in a planning block. So you'll have a planning block, it says PB, and that's the ID number. It's just like planning block one, and it'll have the number of K through five students in that planning block. So you can evaluate that as well. The statistics uh, that are pertinent to the study area and are, are um, in the middle, you will see all those. What's available, I'll get a little bit into this. So what's available is on that data table, you're going to have all the current information. So what was the 16-17 enrollment, the utilization of the schools, uh, the demographic data. So you'll have um, the minority uh, English language learner percents and the uh, free and reduced lunch percents. And then you'll have below that a table that has options A, B, C, and D, all the same information. So what is the over under? Uh, a negative number meaning that it's under capacity, uh, the options leaving it with available seats. If it does not a negative, they're still over seats. Um, and the committee members will be, and BCPS staff will be available to answer any questions as you're going um, and looking at these maps. There's also the tables, like I said, 1% minority. You'll have the English language learners and how, how those percentages change between the different options and the percentage of, of free and reduced lunch. Um, two other statistics that are available, it will tell you each option, you'll be able to see how many walkers are changing between the options. So currently, if someone was in a walk boundary and is now on a bus or uh, vice versa, you'll be able to see that impact for the options. And then finally, the total number of impacted children per option. So how many children will be switching schools? So tonight, um, it's a gal what we term a gallery walk. You'll have the opportunity to go and review the options uh, and talk to your committee members and ask them questions, provide feedback. Um, and then you can go and there's uh, two ways you can comments in the survey you can tell them and then there's a boundary study email that you can provide feedback in as well 
There's, uh, like I said, the committee members, Ms. Bell, BCTS staff will all be around to help you with these discussions. Uh, although the discussions around the maps are very important, please submit your feedback, and I know I've probably said this like 15 times, <laughs> please submit your feedback online for when the survey and the emails. The online survey will begin this evening. Uh, there are four computers set up in the back to take the survey tonight. It doesn't end till November 2nd, so uh, you have time. You have time to go back and tell your community, your friends, your family to take the online survey. The survey is available in Burmese and Spanish as well. There are um, language cards uh, on how to take the survey. We have these. Um, it's instructions on how to take the survey and how to find it. The website are also available. These are available in English, Burmese, and Spanish as well. The public feedback isn't intended to pick the best option. It's not a voting uh, where we're voting and whatever option gets the most feedback or is liked the most is the one we move forward. It's really just to provide input and feedback to the committee so the committee can consider that when making a recommendation. And the best feedback is constructive comments regarding changes that better adhere to the, per, uh, the project objectives and the Rule 1280 considerations. The next meeting is November 8th, uh, where the committee will take the feedback from the online surveys. They'll make adjustments uh, to the draft maps as needed uh, that, may that may make them better adhere to the objectives and considerations that we outlined. Uh, and then the committee will choose an option to recommend to the Board of Education. For further questions and comments, we ask that you visit our website to see materials um, all the meetings that we've had so far, all of the materials that the committee has received are available online. The 10 consideration or the 10 draft options that they first created, the, everything is available online. All the meetings are available online. You can visit there and see any of the um, videos from previous meetings, uh, the options that they consider, the statistics, and all of that information is available on this website. And then here is the email address that if you have comments that you'd like to provide that it's the survey doesn't allow you to um, put enough characters in or you know, to um, provide your feedback. You can also submit them to this boundary study email. The committee receives all these emails and actually all emails that are posted are put online. So if you submit an email, it will be put online so everyone can see your thoughts and your concerns. I wanna thank everybody again for participating uh, and we can get into, um, I'm going to ask the committee members if they can um, station themselves by the maps and then you are welcome to go around and ask questions, review the maps and we are all here um, available to answer any questions that you have. Um, one other thing as everyone um, begins to go to the maps to look at the options and statistics, we also have a Spanish uh, interpreter available if anyone uh, needs assistance. Um, where'd she go? Oh, <laughs> right back in the corner if anyone um, ha needs um, assistance. 